there is a power that lies dormant within each of us. A creative force waiting to be awakened. Potentials of mind science barely understands. Harnessing the energies of consciousness is the next chapter in human evolution. Join us as we explore the secrets of mind and the technology and people behind the revolution. This is the Mind Warrior Project. This is Zygon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Mind Warrior Podcast. I'm Rob Hopping. In this special edition of our weekly podcast, Dane and I are going to talk about the recently released Way of the Mind Warrior and how the Law of Attraction the purpose of the universe, and everyone's role in it are connected. So, Dane, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. So let's just jump right in and explain this big idea and why it's so important. Okay. Well, it is a big idea. Uh, and so there's a lot to cover. So let me just let me just give you kind of the, the starting, you know, way of looking at this. Okay. And that's this. The, uh, the force that operates the universe is consciousness. Mm -hmm. So think about that. And we're not talking about the Star Wars movie, The Force, even though I think George Lucas got it right, meaning it, everyone kind of intuitively knows that there's some unseen force in the universe that kind of, that you can tap into. Right. And that is exactly what we're talking about. So the, what we're talking about now is that the, is that, and that's what the way of the mind warrior is about, is this organizing principle around the universe literally runs everything, energy and consciousness and matter, which are all linked. Okay. And the mind, which is like a node on this giant consciousness computer network, has access to this system, much like how cloud computing works. And, and you could literally upload and download information. And this is hard, kind of hard to get your mind around because uh, even though in the quantum world, there's some explanation for this, from the standpoint of Newtonian physics, this is kind of hard to, for people to understand. So, but that's, that's the core principle here is the fact that the universe is actually consciousness and we can utilize that or tap into that. And it's been known for thousands of years that this potential exists. It's just the proper uh, focusing and the training to be able to do that. So our mind is really what connects us to everything. Correct. And human beings know this intuitively. Human beings have an instinct intuition function that's like the sixth sense. That's not really well understood. Um, animals have the instinct function. Humans have this instinct intuitive function. It's just not trained or refined. Right. So part of what, and it's part of mind. And so um, what we do is in a in kind of an embryonic way, because we certainly haven't refined it fully ourselves, is have an understanding that that mind is a component of the universal mind or universal consciousness. And it's like a node on a, on a gigantic network that's attached to that. That's got maybe one way of looking at it. That's kind of a, an analogy that I think you could get your mind around. And, and so as um, examples of this, which we all sort of take for granted, don't necessarily even try to explain, um, are say deja vu. Right. Everyone has had that. It's like that experience. I've I've been here before. It's almost as if I can tell you what's going to happen. Um, another example is when out of the blue you decide to contact someone that you haven't say spoken with in in a very long time, and you call them. And immediately they say, you know, I was just thinking about you. Right. Some of that could be mental telepathy or it could be a synchronicity or a precognition. But all these weird interconnected things have to do with mind and how it operates on this other level. Right. And, and some people view, just call it a sixth sense. And that's kind of a generalized term, even though there's when you actually unpack it and drill down, there's all kinds of different aspect elements of, quote, that sixth sense. So it's like a two way connection where we send and we receive. Right. So what that suggests is everything we say, do, feel, perceive, 
is sent into the universe. And even another way of looking at it is, because we're both receivers and transmitters, is that to actually ask the question or look at, well, what is it being received or transmitted to? So we actually termed it the matrix back before the, it was actually the matrix movies existed. Okay. Uh, it's the collective unconscious. Uh, it's the, it's this universal mind that, uh, that we're all connected to. And in, in the remote viewing business or the remote viewing industry, we have a very refined set of protocols that we're able to actually access that universal mind or matrix and download information. So a, another way of looking at it is that the universe is this gigantic information field. Everything, even DNA, DNA is really information. Everything in the universe is based on in, uh, based on information. And now that we have computer models, we can kind of like, you know, metaphorically go, okay, well, it's like this giant, you know, cloud computer. And our minds are like these nodes that are attached to that cloud computer. And we can download stuff and we can upload stuff. So wrapping my mind around this as, as best I can, it is a two-way communication. And literally everything that I do and say and think about um, is sent out. Conversely, I'm also receiving information. That's correct. Yeah, this is not a new idea. This is a very old idea. And in fact, all the mystery schools taught it. Um, it's, it's, it forms the basis of shamanism. Um, it really wasn't until we, the Western world woke up to it or the possibilities of it. And, and we were trained in the, in courses in visualization and this sort of thing that people kind of realized, okay, well, this whole idea of the law of attraction, there's something to this, but no one really understands the fundamentals of how it works or why it works. And I guess the best way to look at that would be looking at the science of quantum physics. And those guys in the 30s, like Heisenberg and Einstein, and those guys were, were looking at this world, this quantum world, and it just behaved in this very strange, you know, mysterious way where particles could exist in, its, in the same place and time at exactly the same time. And it was your, your mind or your consciousness that observing it that would determine which direction the particle would go. So this idea that there is a unifying force that connects everything. Well, that's what they were looking at. And there was when they were, when they define, when physics defines the universe, they have the four principal forces. Einstein spent his whole life trying to find out what the fifth force was. And they were using all sorts of, you know, mathematical, theoretical models and trying to come up with, well, what is, what is the organizing principle of the universe? How do all these four forces connect? What is it? And how do these probability patterns work? In fact, Einstein's famous quote is, God doesn't play with dice, right. you know, how the probability world actually exists and works. It's theoretical still, and I think that's where science and religion have to unite to really understand what, this, what the meaning behind all of this is. But the bottom line is the unifying force that connects the universe is consciousness. And so we as, as beings, which are not fully evolved yet, but are on the, on the way of evolving, and on the planet Earth, supposedly are the highest form of, of consciousness evolution, reach a level of self-awareness and reach a level of understanding that we have a role in all of that, that our minds or that create consciousness have an ability to interact with that information field and allows the mind to take all those probability patterns in the universe to interact with them and organize it. Because here, here, because the, how the universe really, really works is there is no time. Right. There is no past, present, or future. It all exists at exactly the same time. So it's like it's almost like a, a record player. So you take an old record, right? This is, this is kind of an analogy to look at. So you take a record, and you drop your needle on any place, or you know, the needle on any place in the record, and you're playing a song in a linear way, right? So you're playing in real time, present time, that linear way. All the information exists at exactly the same time on that record, on other tracks. You just haven't moved the needle to experience those other tracks. And so the way I look at it is the fact that our minds exist in kind of the present time with, all, with a reality distortion. So it's kind of like a, a reality distortion that allows our consciousness to exist in linear time and we kind of in present, move moment to moment, but that doesn't mean that we, our consciousness can't jump out of that track and go someplace else on that record and actually pick up information 
and or even download information that's remote in time or space. You know, there was a, a great line by Tom Hanks in that movie, um, Castaway, and his whole life was about time, being on time, understanding time, making sure that he adhered to the schedules the time demanded. He gets thrown on an island, and all of a sudden, there really is no need for that. So his line was, we should never turn our back on time. We're forcing ourselves to basically have our lives controlled by this concept of time. When the reality is, if you're on a desert island, you have no schedules. I mean, the sun comes up, the sun goes down. So time is almost irrelevant at that point. You're right. Well, you actually get rid of your clock and time changes because your reference point to what time is it is gone. So your sense of time is only by the sun right? for the most part. You know, and, and so that's, it, it, it's a change in perspective. Meditation is really the only thing that can take you into a timeless moment or of space. Because what you're doing is you're shutting off part of your, your third dimension reality sensory inputs. And so you're, you're driving your attention and focus inward where your mind experiences time in a different way. Right. You know, I remember we've had we've had this conversation uh, many times over the years, and I remember one of the first times we were having it, and I asked you, so how can you really understand? And you said that. You said through experience. That's really the only way you can truly sort of wrap your mind around this concept of there is no time. Yeah, and in fact, not only that, but even understanding your role in the universe, understanding... Um, all these deeper meanings of, of your interaction with life is direct experience. Right. This, is, this is not a, it's not an intellectual idea. And that's why science fails. Now, science is great. I mean, science is, is good in the fact that we need it to understand our third dimension, physical reality and all of that, but it's limited. And so there's this other place that goes beyond that, that takes you in a transcendent way. And that's where the spiritual uh, uh, leaders understood this to really grasp the meaning of everything and to, and to pull it in. And it's, it's not a Cartesian, you know, where you can slice it and dice it and understand things in all their little micro components. There's a, there's a bigger picture idea here. That's, that's actually much bigger. There's a story that you uh, describe um, in the way of the mind warrior, when you had this flash of insight about the purpose of the universe, when you're watching a little league baseball game, Right. And so those were interesting times. And I was, uh, I was meditating. I was studying. I was trying to figure things out. I was in my 20s. I was living in Southern California at the time. And to me, the big question was, what is the purpose of the universe? In other words, it was, to me, that was bigger as an idea than just what is the meaning of life or the meaning of my life. In other words, if I could somehow wrap my mind around what is the purpose of the universe, Wow, I thought I would know everything because that would that's kind of the fundamental or a fundamental truth that anyway I was searching for. So I was meditating on it and I was frustrated. I would journal and I would write notes and one day I was walking in the park and I saw a little league baseball game. And all of a sudden a voice came to me that said the purpose of the universe is being. That was it. It just said the purpose of the universe is being. And a lot of times when people meditate Answers don't come right away. Sometimes they do, but for the most part, answers find you at the appropriate time, at the appropriate place, when you're ready for it. It's like the old, the old fashioned thing is when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Right. So I was ready and watching this game just was a metaphor for me. So, I mean, there's, you've got players on the field, you've got spectators, you've got this action going on and, and so I thought, well, what if the universe operates like this? What if, it's, what if it's just a game that's being played and there's a set of rules, there's spectators, witnesses, like witness consciousness, and there's players, you know, participants, mm -hmm. and you have this set of rules and you just do it for fun. And at the end of the game, you go home and you come back some other time and you do it all over again. So for, for, for me, for whatever reason, that was the trigger and a triggering moment. I realized the purpose of the universe is to be. Right. And if I were God, 
that would be perfect because what I would do is I would create a universe that you have infinite number of possibilities. Right. You have infinite number of probabilities of life happening. Life exists everywhere it possibly can. And it does on planet Earth. I mean, it's amazing. If you this planet is absolutely freaking teeming with life. Right. And I think that's the magnificence of it. And if you're depressed, just go outside and go stand on the grass for a minute. And just think about all the life forms that are within 10 feet of you. Right. It's 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 absolutely un freaking real. And so it was that realization was that was that okay, so what God would be with a perfect you know, way of defining it rather than as a personal God, but as this universal energy would be to experience consciousness in all of its possible permutations and forms as this giant information field or this giant matrix. And that's what, and I got really excited about that and, 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 and thought about it and realized, aha. And so just being, just existing, just adding your consciousness stuff to the universe through your experiences. You know, the, remember the old bumper sticker back in the seventies or eighties that said, he who dies with the most toys wins. Mm -hmm. It actually should have read he who dies with the most experiences wins. Right. Cause that's, you know, the stuff doesn't mean anything. It's nothing. What ma what matters is you living, you loving, you being a human being. And at the end of your journey, you, you've maxed it. That's it. If one accepts this concept of, of being, the whole purpose is to be, to exist, to experience as much as you can, think of the freedom that's imbued in that concept. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that you don't have a job or that you don't take care of your kids or you don't mow the lawn or you, know, you don't live a life in a normal way. But you're right. The perspective suddenly is a very, very freeing thing because suddenly you realize I don't have to be anything. Right. I can just be. In other words, I don't have to, let's say, conform to what other people think I should be. I just need to be. And here's what it does. Here's, I think here's the, here's the clarifying moment is that the goal of you is to be the happiest you can be. That's what God wants for all of us. Right. That's what we want for all of us. But we think we, we think we have to you know, suffer and toil and do things that, that we're supposed or have to do, or that all the have to's rather than the want to's. My, my thesis is I think you should do more want to's. Right. And what I've learned is that there truly is joy in everything in everywhere in, in, in every experience. What's the most joyful experience you've ever had or experiences? If you were to actually say right now on air, what is, what are the what are the times in your life that were the most joyful? You know, honestly, it's when there is no time. It's when I am purely in the moment. I've had those moments um, in the forest, in the wilderness, ah. where the colors are vivid. My senses are so heightened that everything that's going on from a, from the breeze, the sense in the air, from the sounds. And what are you doing? I am just being. I basically have removed all thoughts. One of the biggest challenges for me is how thoughts interrupt my experiences. For example, thinking about in the past, thinking about something in the future that becomes a barrier for trying to experience that moment of existence. So for me, it's really quieting my mind. What are you physically doing? I'm sitting by a stream. So you're connecting with the natural world, which tends to bring out those moments more than sitting in, in your desk or sitting at your desk, sitting in front of a computer or even having a conversation with someone. That's true. And, and that's because the contemplation is best served when you're surrounded by the majesty of nature. Right. Because it, it's big. I mean, it's big. We just, we're just cut off from it. And connecting that to the concept of connectedness, where trying to grasp this concept of, of us being connected to everything, those are the moments when you really truly experience it. That's when I'm also the most connected to the universe. Right. I, all, everyone is. So usually when I ask that question to people, they go, you know, I was on a family camp out. We were all sitting around a fire, singing songs or making samoras or whatever you know people do around a campfire. And they would say, I just felt like liberated. I felt really good. I didn't, I wasn't thinking about the bills I had to pay or this or that. I was just enjoying the moment of sitting in front of the fire with my family. 
Right. See, again, that's a natural experience. The same, you know, someone could say the same thing about, I took my shoes off and ran across the lawn and acted like a kid jumping up and down and just enjoying the, the feel of the grass on my feet. Right. And, and there are, there are times when that's more challenging to be able to do that, whether you're in a crowded city or, you know, you're on an airplane. But here's my challenge. My challenge to everyone listening to this is that you actually have those moments, those real moments, anytime you want. The secret is go outside. So even if you're in an urban setting and there's, there, you know, and it's, there's you know, noisy sounds of the city, there's, uh, you know, there's grime, there's, there's this or that or the other thing that, that smells awful, whatever, whatever it is, there's still, there's still that sensory input that you can grab. Right. And I, I would just suggest to just do it. Just force yourself to be mindful, and that's why they call it a mindful practice or mindfulness, is to just go outside and grab as much of that sensory input as you possibly can. I guarantee you'll see that little flower growing up through the crack of the sidewalk. I guarantee it. Yep. So this is the foundational concept, the universe is consciousness. Yes. And, what, you know, we spend a lifetime just contemplating that. And it's so critically important because it is the beginning of being on the path to enlightenment. That's where you have to start. Right. This ends part one of this podcast. Please listen to part two for more of the universe's consciousness. There is a power that lies dormant within each of us. A creative force waiting to be awakened. Potentials of mind, science barely understands. Harnessing the energies of consciousness is the next chapter in human evolution. Join us as we explore the secrets of mind and the technology and people behind the revolution. This is the Mind Warrior Project. This is Zygon.